Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend, and the Lord is with you. And the Lord was also with Gideon, and we're going to be taking a little snippet and adding my imagination to it about a time in Gideon's life when God was calling him out. And you can read the whole exciting story of Gideon in Judges, starting in chapter 6 and ending towards the end of chapter 8. God's messenger shook his head in confusion as he peered over the scrap of parchment in his hand. I think I must have the wrong address. I was told I'd find a man of God here, threshing his wheat. But all I can see is that old empty wine press over there. He puzzled over the situation and he gradually became aware of an unusual sight of wheat chaff wafting up from the bottom of the old press. The messenger left the shelter of the old oak tree that he rested against and wandered over to peer down into the press. Through the cloud of chaff and wheat, he could hardly see the vague shadow of a man covered from head to foot with wheat dust. Looking at the message he was to deliver, then glancing up to the heavenlies for reassurance, the angel cleared his throat, squared his shoulders, and called down into the press. Pursing his lips before he spoke, the angel looked at the young man before him. Showing great restraint, he managed to keep the sarcasm out of his tone as he declared, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now there was little in Gideon's response to the angel's declaration that gave any evidence that this resistant young man was indeed the hero that God declared him to be. But God knew differently. He saw the potential leader in Gideon and shaped him into the man destined to lead Israel to victory against a very strong foe. Many of us can relate to Gideon in that wine press. We quickly slip into cynicism and fatalism about ourselves and about others. We'd rather hide from the enemy than go into battle. We demand confirmation after confirmation before we finally step forward into obedience at God's call. We regularly test God's infinite patience. We've disappointed him through our disobedience and yet God doesn't give up on us. He continues to call us forth out of the wine press. We may not see our potential and others may not see our potential but God does. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. It doesn't matter to God how messed up your life is. He would like you to come to him so he can help you clean up the mess that's in your life. However, if you give him all that mess, all the confusion, all the doubts, all the cynicism, he can still direct you to the call that he has placed upon your life. There's two sides to this tale. There's Gideon's that is covered really well in Judges 6 to 8. And then in my imaginary little tale, there's the angel, and I think a lot of us can fit into the angel's role here, where we're looking down at a person, we're looking at their outer demeanor, and we're thinking there's no way on God's green earth that God could ever use this man or redeem this person into all that God created them to be. But when we make those blanket judgments against another person, we are stalling the destiny that God may have for them. And God has a plan. He wants to prosper us. It might take us a while to get there, but he still has a plan. And he has a plan to bless us. He has a plan to bless 
those people in our lives who we are praying for, but who, in the secret places of our own heart, we doubt will ever change. And he even has a plan that he wants to fulfill in the life of the guy who just cut you off in traffic today.